You know, we talk about Loretta Lynn's coal miner's daughter, how the influence of being the daughter of a hard-working coal miner shaped her music career. But with this guy, you might as well call him Cotton Mill's son because his upbringing uh, of a hard work ethic could really apply to his uh, National League tenure as a Major League Baseball uh, pitcher. A big part of the Big Red Machine back in the day in the 1970s, uh, he played in Major League Baseball, most notably between 64 and 78 with the Reds, and a 75 World Series champion. Of course, today we're talking with the great Clay Carroll. Now, born Clay Palmer Carroll in Clanton, Alabama, May 2nd, 1941, in the midst of the Second World War. Uh, played, again, as a right-handed pitcher, most notably as a member of the Reds dynasty that won three division titles, one NL pennant, and the 75, again, World Series crown. He also played for Milwaukee, Atlanta Braves, Chicago White Sox, St. Louis Cardinals, and Pittsburgh Pirates. A two-time All-Star, Carroll was one of the top relief pitchers in MLB during the mid-1970s when the Reds became known as the Big Red Machine for the dominance of the National League. In 72, Carroll led the National League in saves as we had named the Sporting News Fireman of the Year or what he called the Rollades Award. He ranked third all-time amongst Red players in game appearances, and Carroll was inducted in the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame all the way back 44 years ago in 1980. Now, Carroll was one of nine children of a cotton mill worker who died in 66. Growing up in Clanton, Carroll went to Chilton County High School and also worked many jobs, including as a curb a service boy at a restaurant uh, at the Cotton Mill, where his father worked, and loading watermelons onto trucks. That's a rough job, ladies and gentlemen. Carroll was signed by the Braves as an amateur free agent in 61 and made his major league debut at age 63 some three years later in September of 64, uh, hurling the two shutout innings against the Cardinals. Now, Carroll was acquired along with Tony uh, Kloniger and Woody Woodward by the Reds from the Atlanta Braves for Milt Pappas, Bob Johnson, and Ted Davidson on June 11, 68. Nicknamed Hawk due to his profile likeness of the bird, he was selected to the National League All-Star team in 1971 and 72. He now led the NL in saves in 72 with 37 and finished tied for fifth in Cy Young Award voting that campaign. The 37 saves stood as an NL record until Bruce Souter broken in 84 with 45 for the Cardinals. Now, Carroll's best season were with the Reds from 68 to 75, which earned him a place in the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame. Now, Carroll pitched in three World Series for the Reds, including the 75 World Series, which the Reds won in seven games over the Boston Red Sox. He starred in the 1970 World Series. He appeared in five of the six games, hurling nine shutout innings with 11 strikeouts. Carroll, along with rookie Don Gullett, paced an injury-riddled staff that was otherwise ineffective against Baltimore. Carroll was the winning pitcher in the Reds' one victory against the Orioles. Overall in the postseason, Carroll boasted a 4-2 record with two saves, a blown save, and a 139 ERA in 22 appearances, allowing just five earned runs in 32 in the third innings. He was eventually traded by the Reds to the White Sox for Rich Hinton and minor league catcher Jeff Sovern on December 12, 75. After going 4-4 four four with six saves and two five six six. ERA had 29 appearances <coughs> with the White Sox. He was dealt to the Cardinals for Laren Legro during spring training in March 20, on March 23rd, 77. Now, Carol and his ex-wife Judy are the parents of two daughters, Connie and Lori, along with a son, uh, Brett, sometimes reported as uh, Brett with only one T, not two. The uh, couple divorced in 81. In 83, uh, Carol uh, married Franja Noah Shedesky, a widow with children of her own. During a November 85 shooting at her home in Brand uh, uh, Bradenton, Florida, Carol was wounded and his wife Frances and C Carol's son Brett, 11, were shot and killed by Frances's 26-year-old son, Frederick. Carol's stepson was convicted of murder and sentenced to death in Florida's electric chair. Several years later, a new trial was ordered at which Frederick was given a life sentence. He continues to serve. Now, Carol frequently returned to Cincinnati for the team's annual Reds Fest event, including in December 2012. He's also a member of the Alabama Sports Hall of Fame. So, uh, again, uh, he's had some rough times in his uh, post-career. But all I know about Carroll, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Sparky had a lot of uh, faith in him. And there was a lot of key games that uh, he he took them out of uh, what he called heavy deficits and uh, allowed them to have victory. But you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, at the time, once the big red machine got 
got rolling. The need for save opportunities or saves was uh, very limited because Cincinnati was uh, was well ahead again, more than that, uh, more than three runs in most contests. And but what Clay, uh, Clay did, he solidified and stabilized a pitching staff that was riddled with injuries over the years. And here he comes in, and like I said, he does he does everything that's needed of him, and he's well deserving of any accolades he gets. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the story of the great Clay Carroll. If you like what you're doing here with our Cincinnati Reds uh, Big Red Machine podcast, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Bye.